Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon and Risings. Welcome to your November 2022 horoscope. My name is Kaylin, and today I'm going to be covering the major transits for November using tropical astrology and the whole sign system. First of all, thank you for being patient. I know Pisces always get their videos last. Nevertheless, lucky last for you guys. So you can watch this horoscope if you are a Pisces rising, also known as ascendant sign, a Pisces sun, or a Pisces moon. I recommend that you watch all three horoscopes just to give you a really good idea of what's coming through in November. Having said that, if you've only got time to watch one horoscope today, I would go with your rising sign horoscope because generally speaking, the rising sign horoscope is the most accurate overall. So let's start off by looking at Mars retrograde. Mars will be retrograde in Gemini from the end of October on the 30th or the 31st, depending where you live in the world, until the 12th of January. So that is a 10-week period. Mars will be in Gemini for seven months altogether. So Mars first entered Gemini on the 20th of August, and it will be there until the 25th of March in 2023. Mars retrograding in fourth house indicates that you are focused on property matters, your living circumstances, your home, home life, your family, um, your parents, your children, if they're still around or if you have children. Regardless, this can also indicate your chosen family, flatmates, housemates, and also the fourth house is connected to our ancestry and lineage. So with that being said, let's go through a few different ways that this can play out for you. First, I just want to say that Mars retrograde indicates that we're putting a lot of our energy and effort into something and it requires more energy and effort than usual. So we can be hyper-focused on these matters. Now, Mars rules over your second house being Aries and this is connected to your finances. It also rules over your ninth house, which I'm going to come to in a moment. So for some of you, you could be looking at signing a new contract that is connected to renting a property, buying or selling. With this being retrograde, this could be something that you've been in the works with for a while, that you've had in the works for a while, I should say. There could be some issues with an existing contract that you are trying to iron out. You could be trying to get the price lowered. Or if you are the one who is selling a property, you could be fighting to increase the price. So when I say fighting, I mean you could be in negotiations with someone or you could be butting heads with your real estate agent or realtor or whatever you call it, wherever you are, about what the price should be. This can see you searching for a new lease or for a different place to live. Many Pisces individuals, but especially Pisces risings and moons, will be looking at switching up their living situation or there will be chains, changes within the family home. Even if you're a Pisces sun, this can apply to you as well. I'm just giving double points to Pisces moons and risings. On a different note, this can see you looking at wanting to relocate overseas, or maybe you're looking at purchasing a property overseas. There could be some complications with property or land that you own overseas, or you could be looking at returning to um, a country that you've lived in before. Now, you may actually be pursuing citizenship in another country, or this could be a visa. On a different level, this could be related to construction. So you may be building a new property. Building plans may be paused during this time, or if they've been on pause, they may be recommenced. Some of you may need to change your strategy or change your approach. What I mean by this is maybe you need to change builders, or if you wanted a certain layout for your home, which is under construction, this may need to be reworked. I don't want to freak you guys out though. It doesn't mean you need to scrap plans altogether. It can just indicate that things are going to be delayed 
if the due date is within that 10 week period of time, again, end of October till 12th of January. So things may be complete after the 12th of January. Um, so that could be mid to late January. However, you may be looking at waiting till after Mars leaves Gemini, which again will be the 25th of March. So some of you could simply be renovating the home and this could be taking up a lot of your energy and effort, could be chewing up a lot of money over this as well. You may need to repair the the. Um, repair like a fence or repair things around the home and some of you may be trying to evict tenants if you're prop if you are landlords or property owners or you may be looking at getting new tenants coming in and um, let's just see on a different note because Mars is in Gemini which is all about education and Mars rules over the ninth house which is connected to higher learning, some of you could be wanting to educate yourself about property or about the real estate market. Some of you could become qualified to um, sell property. You could be going for your um, estate agent's license or whatever it's called, wherever it is that you live. You could become a property manager. So you could be going through the process of receiving a qualification. And um, lastly, with this, some of you may be wanting to learn about your ancestry and about your lineage. Worst case scenario with Mars retrograde in the fourth house, which is connected to family, is that you may be not agreeing with family members or flatmates, okay? You could be butting heads. There could be some tension in the home or some discord. And, um, you know, this could be something where, you don't necessarily need to be directly involved. It could even just be that the people that you live with are not necessarily getting on. Long story short, there could just be some kind of tension within your home, which is causing a little bit of discomfort. And also the fourth house is connected to children and family. So some of you may be looking at planning to start a family or to expand your family or you may be redressing your parenting style. And on a different note, um, some of you could be working with a family planner or you could be changing your, um, your approach to the timeline. So, for example, some of you may decide to put trying to have children on pause for now and um, maybe you want to wait till you know, early next year or the second quarter of next year. Just as an example, doesn't need to be that timeline though. And for some of you, if starting to have a family or um, expand your family was something that you had previously put on hold, you may be, you know, um, you may be picking this back up again where you and your partner or if you're doing the solo, want to start that process once more. So, now let's have a look at the total lunar eclipse in Taurus. So this will take place on the 8th of November and it will be in your third house. So we are very much in eclipse energy or eclipse season already. And this is because we've actually got an eclipse on the 25th of October. So some of you, especially because Pisces are very intuitive and always picking up on the energies and the emotions of what's going on, you may feel a little bit restless. It may be harder for you to fall asleep, stay asleep. You may feel a little bit fatigued around this period of time. This could have started for you even as early as the beginning of October. And in terms of when it's at its peak, it's really between the 25th of October and the 8th of November, which is the date of the two eclipses. So things will start to calm down after the 8th of November. But if you've just been feeling like, the energies are weird and people are acting kind of strange and maybe you feel like change is afoot. You're quite right. You're just picking up on energy, uh, eclipse energy. So congratulations if, you know, your spidey senses are tingling, you're spot on. With this total eclipse occurring in Taurus in your third house at 15 degrees and 59 minutes, the fact that it's a total eclipse rather than a partial lunar eclipse tells us that this eclipse is more intense than a normal eclipse and we actually had a partial full moon eclipse in Taurus 
So, you know, similar conditions back in November last year in 2021. So there may be similar themes that are cropping up for you around now, although it could be a different situation, even if, you know, you're noticing some similarities. The third house is connected to education, short courses, qualifications, tests, exams, co-workers, friends, siblings, relatives, how you think, and communications. It rules a bunch of other stuff as well, but basically this eclipse in the third house tells us that something is reaching a conclusion or it is reaching its peak, it's you know coming to a close, or we're getting to the pointy end of things. So some of you may be completing a course. So this could be any kind of educational course. Maybe you are looking at receiving a qualification or a diploma or some kind of certification. Because this eclipse is almost exactly conjunct Uranus, there's something here where it's like you're going out with a bang. So maybe the test is brought forward or there's a bit of a curveball there. Maybe you are completing this project early. Maybe you are transferring to a different course. You could actually just quit. doesn't mean that you're necessarily finishing this course or this program or receiving this qualification. I'm not saying that you guys are failing. It's just like, hey, you might just be like, I don't need this. I don't need this stress in my life. I don't want to take the test. On a different note, though, this could see you finding something out about a coworker, a friend, or maybe even a sibling or a relative. And I'm saying this because while we've got the full moon eclipse in Taurus, we've also got the sun in Scorpio. And the sun is actually conjunct Mercury, which is information. And it's also conjunct Venus. And this whole eclipse is being T-squared by Saturn. So there could be something unpredictable that comes to light. So information, which is the third house, about someone that you know, doesn't necessarily need to be a friend or a co-worker or a family member. It could just be someone who is um, like an acquaintance of yours or like a friend of a friend. Even if it's not about a person, it could be information that is very important to you one way or another. Now, the third house represents how we think and how we communicate. So you could have some kind of epiphany when it comes to whether or not you are adequately making yourself heard and understood. Maybe you are trying to reframe the way that you think, especially if you're trying to shift from a glass half empty attitude and way of thinking to a glass half full approach. Now, because the third house is connected to projects and communications pieces, this could see you actually completing a project and maybe it's now ready for publication or for release. There could be a sense of insecurity about whether or not this is you know, actually ready to be seen by other people. You could be landing a contract to get your work published. And I'm saying that because third house is connected to contracts and this eclipse is opposite Mercury in the ninth house and, not, and the ninth house is connected to publishing and publications. You could be concluding some kind of article, um, documentary, a film, something that you've been working on that involves technology or writing or um, digital media in some way, shape or form. So ultimately, this, this eclipse is kind of exciting in the sense that it has this air of unpredictability. And so if you are completing a project or a course, it's like, you know, you're going to find out where this can take you next. So it's almost like the end of this chapter or cycle could lead to another opportunity and a new opportunity at that. Worst case scenario, though, is that you could have some kind of blowout or heated discussion with a friend, a co-worker, a sibling or a relative it doesn't need to be that you have a falling out, though. You could just have a very illuminating conversation with this person. Maybe you're surprised about their point of view. Or it could be that you are the one who is going to them and saying, hey, 
I'm, I'm not feeling great about this situation or I really want to just share my personal thoughts and feelings with you. Now, let's have a look at Venus entering Sagittarius. So on the 16th of November, Venus will leave Scorpio and enter Sagittarius, which means it will be transiting your 10th house. Wherever Venus goes, whatever house it is transiting, this is where the matters of that house can go well and be more pleasant and we can enjoy them. So Venus being in your 10th house is favorable to you in the sense that it enhances public image. Okay, if you're putting yourself out there, it doesn't matter if this is to, you know, get noticed in a romantic sense or to do with work or to do with, you know, um, even content that you're putting out, even photos on Facebook, you know, it doesn't need to always be um, like a, a life-changing event. Nevertheless, Venus in your 10th house is like people are noticing you. They're complimenting you, complimenting your work, complimenting, um, you know, job well done or your appearance. You can come off as charming and generous and diplomatic, especially in the workplace and especially to your boss or to anyone who's in a position of authority, this can see you coming off as more attractive and more appealing. So let me just say that if you do need to put yourself out there, if you want to make a splash, a gentle splash, and get noticed and make a positive first impression, now 16th of November till the 10th of November, uh, 10th of December could be a good time for you to do so. So if you are looking at releasing something um, on social media or to do with technology, or even if this is just a project, documentary, a communications piece with Venus ruling the third house, this could be a good time for you to do that. And, you know, you could, you could receive recognition for the work that you've done. And lastly, this can see you enjoying your work, enjoying your career, feeling like, you know, you're receiving the praise that you deserve and the recognition that you deserve for all the hard work that you've been doing. And certainly you could be getting along with your boss during this period of time. So if you have a moody boss, if you have a boss who is very tacky turn and you really need to plan out when to ask them for leave or for whatever it is that you want. This is a good time. So that's the window of opportunity, 16th of November till 10th of December. If you want to ask for a favor or for some kind of benefit with work, even if it's, you know, a raise, try to plan it during that window of time. I know you guys know best because you're Pisceans and you can read people really well. So on the 19th of November, Mars will be retrograde in Gemini in your fourth house uh, and, and it will be squaring Neptune in Pisces in your first house at 22 degrees. So if I can say anything, this would be the spanner in the works that, you know, I'd be avoiding making important decisions on this day plus or minus a couple of days if it pertains to um, your family property decisions and, you know, anything to do with your private life. Of course, this is a general reading. So please take what I'm saying and apply it to your own situation as you see fit. If you need to make important decisions with family that are time sensitive or property, you know, you do what you need to do. So let's talk about family first. Because this is a square aspect, this indicates to me that you know, there could be some family drama going on or drama in your um, in your household, even if you don't live with family, you know, even if you've got a bunch of flatmates. So try not to get sucked in because they will try to suck you in. And that is because of the square to Neptune, which is one of your ruling planets, and it's in your first house. So, you know, even if someone's not dragging you over to tell you the whole story, you may just you know, feel emotionally compelled to involve yourself. But because of the square to Neptune, there is like a, a fog surrounding the situation. And Mars is in Gemini and Gemini's information. So with the retrograde as well, it's sort of like you could 
you may not have all of the information. So you may want to avoid overreacting to any situation that may crop up and maybe avoid making any um, overt claims or statements about, you know, the action that you're going to take, especially because this information may not be sound. So if you could feel a little emotionally drained around this time, even if there's no family drama, no household drama, because Neptune is in your first house and it's square, square to Mars, this can see you just experiencing sort of like, you know, lowered levels of vitality on the 19th of November, plus or minus a couple of days. And, you know, you may just feel like emotionally speaking, you don't have a lot to give right now. So keep it for you, you know, just recuperate, regenerate. Some of you may decide to take a mental health day around that time or just use your annual leave or sick leave, not necessarily because you're sick, but just because you're like, it feels like a stay at home day today. So on a different note with property matters, and your living circumstances, you may be feeling a bit stressed or pressurized to make a decision about where you live, whether to buy, whether to sell, whether whether to sign, you know, a new rental agreement. And, you know, you may just feel um, a little bit down about your personal set of living circumstances. P.S. I'm not trying to project onto you. You know, I have to tell you, I'm a Virgo moon, Gemini rising, and I experienced what well, we all experienced this square on the 12th of October, didn't even notice it. Yes, I'm jet lagged. So I felt really depleted and drained, but you know, you may not even notice it. So it could just be a blip, not even a blip on the radar for you. I just wanted to mention this transit because it does occur three times, 12th of October, 19th of November, plus the 14th of March in 2023. So in terms of how this square can play out, our emotions can be exaggerated or a bit over the top. So we may feel inclined to overreact to a situation or something that wouldn't normally stress us out can have us stressed or, you know, how we respond to a certain event could be kind of out of character and other people could be like, oh, are you okay? And, you know, you may be um, it may just be one of those emotional days where you feel like your emotions are just really at the surface. So if I can give you advice, I would say meditate, go for a walk. If you're feeling down in the dumps and, and kind of, you know, depressed in your own home, this could be a sign that you've you've spent too much time in the home. So I would, you know, go for a walk, maybe go to the beach, go be by the sea, and that may pick, um, that may lift your spirits. So now let's have a look at the new moon in Sagittarius. I'm very, very excited for this new moon because it has really lovely aspects along with it. So first of all, it will occur on the 23rd or the 24th of November, depending where you live in the world. The new moon in Sagittarius will be at one degrees in your 10th house and it will be conjunct Mercury and Venus. Just a few minutes after the new moon, your ruling planet Jupiter will station direct. So I feel like this is an added bonus to the new moon, but I will talk about that after this new moon segment. So new moons indicate a new chapter starting in our lives. So we can be planting the seeds to see something new, I've mentioned this in a few other horoscopes, but I just love this saying, so I'm going to repeat it, and that is the day that you plant the seed is not the day that you eat the fruit. So this can be about intention setting. This can be about getting wind of a new opportunity or feeling inspired about a new opportunity. This could be connected to work. This could be connected to um a bunch of things really because it is conjunct Mercury and Venus. So let's just go through one by one and I will run through a few different ways that this can play out for you. So on a work level, this can see some of you actually getting a new job, getting a promotion. Maybe you are re-entering the workforce after a period of not working. 
This can see you having more managerial responsibilities and because this new moon is conjunct Mercury as well as Venus and Mercury rules over um, training and education and short courses and then we've got Venus, sorry, touch the mic, hope that didn't, hope you can't hear that. And Venus rules over the third house which has these, you know, mercurial connotations you may become an educator, you may become a trainer, you may be pursuing a certification or a diploma or a qualification, which is connected to your work. Your work could be paying for you to receive this qualification. Now, this is a separate matter to what I discussed with the full moon eclipse in Taurus on the 8th of November, because that was something that's already in motion. This is something new, okay? Some of you could be starting a new course and you can become well-known for these skills. This could even be something that you're naturally quite talented at. Now, you could even just be taking on a course which is connected to leadership abilities, how to be a good leader, how to be a manager, how to run a business. This could be a business course or sales. And because the 10th house is the highest point of visibility in your chart, you know, it's the, it's the top of your chart, this can see you experiencing an elevation in your public social standing, okay, or even just your professional, uh, your professional reputation, your public reputation, etc. So this can see you, uh, for some of you, entering into a new relationship. Why, you may ask? Because this new moon is conjunct Mercury, which rules over your seventh house of relationships. And it is conjunct Venus, which rules over relationships. So this could be early days for you. Maybe this is an engagement. Maybe you're actually getting married around this time. And for some of you, um, this could be a change in your property circumstances. Now, the reason why that would be is because of the conjunction to Mercury. The new moon is conjunct Mercury. Mercury rules over your fourth house, which represents your property and living circumstances. So you could become a property owner, you could become a landlord, or this could just be buying a property, um, or, or your, um, your place of residence could be changing, okay? You could now be um, living in a different town, a different country as well, because Sagittarius represents foreign countries. Some of you may actually apply for citizenship or permanent residency in another country or a visa. And even though I mentioned this with the Mars retrograde transit, the Mars retrograde is something that's already in motion. You know, if it's not, it could be coming through as a new start or new intentions that you were setting that you want to live abroad or buy property abroad or get citizenship or PR um, or a visa in a foreign country, and that's coming through with this new moon eclipse, which is, you know, sorry, not new moon eclipse, just a regular new moon, good old new moon with lovely transits attached. So that, once again, will be on the 23rd or the 24th of November. And in terms of new moon energy, you know, it's with us for a week or two weeks, plus or minus, you know, before or after the date, I should say. So. Lastly, with this transit, your parental status could change. You could become a parent. Some of you could become grandparents. Now, on the 23rd or the 24th of November, again, just a few minutes after the new moon in Sagittarius, your ruling planet Jupiter will be stationing direct in Pisces in your first house at 28 degrees. This will officially be the last four weeks of Jupiter being in Pisces, being in your first house for another 12-ish years. So Jupiter's been retrograde for the last five months. That happens every year. It's nothing to, you know, nothing to um, be concerned about. But essentially when Jupiter goes direct again as, as Pisceans ruled by Jupiter, 
you can feel more confident, travel opportunities can crop up. And, you know, if uh, for some of you, this could be like, okay, now you can travel again, or your travel plans can move forward. Some of you may be feeling more motivated and inspired post 23rd of November. This can see you having an increase in your energy levels. This can see you having a positive turn for the better with respect to your health. Maybe you feel like you have healed from something, whether this is emotional, or you can have a physical improvement or experience healing in your physical health. And certainly you can have more optimism and reconnect to your faith and to your belief systems, whether these are religious or spiritual or otherwise. And some of you may even find that you receive clarity on an ethical decision that you need to make or a moral dilemma that you've been experiencing. And so Pisces, that's all I have for you for November, 2022. If you enjoyed this horoscope, please give the video a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content on this channel, please hit the subscribe button. My 2023 yearly horoscopes are underway. I finished filming, but I'm still in the editing process. So these will be available for sale by the time I go live with my November horoscopes. So enjoy your month ahead, Pisces, and I will see you guys in December.